Hey friends. All right. So I wanted to go through and show you a little something that I picked up, um, honestly, from another YouTube video, but I can't find it. Um, so I can't give it out as a link. So I'm going to try and go through this. Um, I get it asked frequently, uh, I, how do I get my picture to look really good when I laser it and whatnot? Um, so I'm going to kind of walk through how, or at least one technique of doing this. Um, so I'm using GIMP. And this is you know, a free program available anywhere. It's equivalent to Photoshop, if you're not familiar with it. Um, and I selected a picture that I got actually today um, because it's a dog and it's white. Uh, and, and white tends to be, you know, a, a serious problem when you're trying to do this because you, you when you're lasering, you know, everything that's dark is, is what gets lasered. And you can see there isn't a whole lot of dark um, on our, 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 our puppy here. So I want to go through and try and show you one of the techniques I use to make it a bit better. So we've got our picture here. Um, I'm not going to fool around with resizing and upgrading the, the DPI and all that. I'm just going to show you the technique for converting the image over to doing something kind of nice. Um, this method also is good if you're trying to get something like a line drawing out of something, uh, a photo. Um, but it also helps with our sharpening. So the first thing, you know, we've got our guy here. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to right click and we're going to duplicate this layer a couple of times. One and two. All right, so our first layer, uh, he's going to sit out here. The first thing we want to do is we want to go to the saturation or we can do hue and saturation. It doesn't matter which. And then we turn the saturation all the way down. And click OK. And then over here in our mode select for this layer, let's go down and it's going to be the HSV saturation. So we switched them over to that. Then we click on our second layer. And we're going to change this to Dodge, um, which gives us a little bit diff something different. And then we go to Colors and we invert the color. Now it looks really crazy. We go to Filters. We go to blur and we're going to apply a Gaussian blur to our image. Now you can see a little bit and the more we increase this, the more detail we start to get. Um, about 15 is good. I mean, play with it. You can figure it out. But usually about right here is handy. Um, and then you can start messing with other things. Once you're done, just click OK. And now we're ready to go for our third one. So. We haven't got all the detail in here that we wanted yet, but we got some of the big highlights. So on our third layer, um, what we're going to do is we're going to play with the levels. Um, what that is, we're going to change the levels of black and well, the, the darks, the midtones, and the lights to try and get uh, a better looking image. So I'm going to grab my darks here and I'm going to slowly slide this up start getting a bit more detail in our puppy. Um, this is also going to help if I push it into Imager later. Um, it will also um, be enhanced a good bit more. Um, it'll be able to remove that background. So we just kind of go in here, get it taken care of, uh, uh, and kind of adjusting here and here. So now you can see we have a whole lot more dark going on in here, and we're starting to get a lot of detail here in the fur and on the face and around the muzzle and up here in the ears. And this image is going to be a whole lot more easy to go ahead and engrave. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll say OK. Um, so that looks actually you know, pretty decent. You know, From here, uh, we can just say you know, export. Um, we'll do an export as. And we'll say demo um, just because it's already in there and I don't want to mess it up. All right, so over on the, the imager side, um, if you subscribe to imager, um, you, know, you can do the background removal uh, uh, version of it to, to go ahead and get the background. I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll upload. Upload demo. Now, depending on, on how many people are using Imager at the same time, it, it can take a little bit of time for it to figure out you know, where everything is um, or you know, to go ahead and do your imaging. 
but you can see that it came out mostly okay so we may not want to use it this way we might go and back in and do an edit uh, um, to get rid of the black because um, yeah it, it didn't quite get everything here the other thing we can do to kind of enhance it is if we upload it to regular imager and I believe this is still free um, I have like I said I have a paid account um, because I want to get rid of the ads uh, um, and that was you know a long time ago um, if your image is too small uh, um, you know the, the DPI look at that 96 that's the original and then the height you know, you'll get this um, it'll be up to you to want to play with it or not uh, but my point in being in here really is to go into the material because I've kind of pre-processed this already. And so I can go through here and do something like, all right, we're going to do this on white tile. Use the Marsend. Marsend tends to be pretty decent for something like uh, photography. Uh, um, and that's kind of sort of what it's going to look like when it comes out. Eh, you know, not a huge fan. Um, part of the reason we're seeing all these is honestly because it is so small um we see these really weird patterns and it's kind of yucky looking um, if we had a larger image um, it'd be much more natural uh, if we can change the material switch it over to norton um, this is actually norton of norton white tile method uh, um, this is uh his, his algorithm um, that he created but you can see it kind of changed things down we'll still see a bunch of the patterns that are in there um but there it is so whether you use imager or not you know it, it's up to you um do the materials um for if you just export straight out of here um you'd use one of the processing algorithms that are in your software um such as i don't know if i have laser box. i do have laser box open all right so we do import don't mind that it's just a cut test i'm working on let's go back to help and we'll open our demo I won't be able to show you light burn on this one but you'll get the idea um, of what we're talking about so this is how big our, our picture is so in here since we didn't process it through imager that's where we'd use something over here um, these are the standard algorithms that many people use. You know, Bear, Floyd, Stucky. Stucky and Atkinson um, and Jarvis are generally the, the most popular ones that are get used. Um, so yeah, you just go ahead and set it in there. You don't really need to monkey with the sharpness uh, since we already processed it. Um, you can if you want. Uh, the lines per centimeter, you can change that up. Um, one thing to remind you is you know, there's only so many the D1 can do before it starts overlapping. So essentially the little dot starts going on top of itself and it'll just kind of blur everything together. It's interesting for some effects, but not something necessary. All right, so that covered my tutorial on how to get this, you know, take a picture and kind of enhance it and get things taken care of. Um, you know, at this stage, you know, it's all up to you as to what you decide to do. Hope this helps.